All right, we're here with the baseball brunch. It's brought to you by Wendy's Breakfast, a breakfast so good you'll want to tell someone about it. I'm Jody Jackson. I'm joined now by Diamondbacks infielder. I mean, Josh, honestly, you could play a lot of different spots on this team outfield. Josh Rojas is joining us. And hey, great spring for you. We're going to talk baseball in a moment. You're kind of king of the Cactus League, though. How does it feel? Uh, I mean, it feels good right now. I mean, you got to save some bullets for the season, but um, I'm just glad to have so many opportunities. I've had so many at bats, um, plenty of chances. So it's, it's it's been good so far. Yeah, for those of us watching, uh, Josh has had an awesome start to spring, uh, leading uh, at the top of the league as far as hits go. So we'll get to your baseball uh approach in 2021 in a bit because I know you've got some exciting things going on that you did in the offseason uh, but let's get to some fun stuff here how about late night news uh, I caught this this is the BYU basketball team in the bubble and I was like what is going on here this is Jesse Wade stuck in the elevator and I just thought this was crazy did you see this at all I, I haven't. This is the first time I've seen it, but this is one of my biggest fears is being stuck in an elevator. Well, I mean, that, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, terrifying. Has this ever, hopefully never happened to you, but what's going through your mind as you watch this? Uh, anxiety. My palms are actually <laughs> sweating right now just thinking about it. Um, in college, actually, I got stuck in an elevator for two minutes. It was the one to get to my apartment. I think I was stuck in there for like two minutes. I just had to press the button again, and I would use the stairs for the rest of the year. I was, I was, I refused to go in that elevator. Wow. Okay. So you, I really struck a nerve here. I hope you're going to yeah. be okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do not like being the thought of being stuck in an elevator at all. So that was at Hawaii. Yeah, that was. And yeah, I mean, I guess for me, it's kind of like, because I've been at arenas and stadiums where it's happened over the years and it's just like, you might see it once every couple of years and there's just that person's always gotten out as Jesse did. You saw his teammates yeah. rescued him. Um, but it's just that fear of like, what if I don't get out? What if yeah. something happens yeah. and yeah. I what can't if get out? The person that's in there for a couple hours, you know? What other fears do you have just branching off of that? Any any other things that uh, kind of get you? What's funny is I, I never had a fear of heights until probably the last three or four years. I've had a fear of like being up too high. And I think it's just... When you're younger, I think you're just so like, you know, nothing can hurt me. I'm unstoppable. And then you start to get older and realize that you're not. And then you just start to get scared of little, like, I don't think I could go on a, uh, a Ferris wheel anymore. I used to love Ferris wheels, but just the thought of being up too high, like even if I'm up on a tall, like apartment building, uh, if I go out on the balcony, it's just like, I don't want to get too close to the edge. So I, I do now have a fear of heights, and I never did before until probably the last couple of years. It's just it's really wow. set, in, set in pretty hard. Yeah. I kind of have something a little bit similar where it's not serious, but it's almost m more with like bridges or structures where I can see, you know, or beams or things. And like, are they going to uh, – okay, I'm yeah. going down a strange road yeah. now. Everyone's going to be like, I oh, my gosh, know. Jody's wacky. But no, I mean, sometimes it just like crosses my mind. And um, I'm from Florida where they have a seven-mile bridge. and I don't know when I'm on that thing down in the keys, I'm almost like, okay, what mile are we at? Here? Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. want to be on the bridge. Anymore. We built this thing. Circle back to BYU again, because it seems like they are having a lot of fun in the bubble. This is the COVID test and they're calling them down to get tested. Is this like the diamondbacks when you guys get, is, is there any, but look no. at this. Are you no. guys having this kind of fun when you guys no, go in? I think, I think we're a lot less excited about getting tested we get tested what well, i think every two days right now so it's kind of just like part of the routine now you just walk in you know spit in the spit in the tube and then pass it on yeah i mean that's life as uh life as a lot of people know it but especially athletes yeah but speaking of that i mean you're in spring training it can get a little bit mundane day after day and there's you know but you guys are a group that you like to have fun has anybody tried to break the monotony? Probably within the rules, of course, but is there anything guys do to break that and just kind of uh, energize the group? Uh, yeah, we have, I mean, we have a lot of great personalities um, in our clubhouse. So, you know, whether it's out when you're hitting or while you're taking ground balls, there's always, you know, laughing, joking around going on. 
Uh, the one thing it is different about this year, it's it's harder to hang out outside of the field. Um, I think you're allowed to hang out in like smaller groups, groups of five only at home. But um, I don't know if many guys have done it, but we, I, I haven't done it at all. But I mean, you get enough time around each other at the field right now that um, we're having just as much fun here. Um, you get, you know, the, the hour in between your different tasks to hang out and talk or in the cage, talking, joking around. So I definitely feel like uh, I've had a lot of fun this spring. It hasn't felt um, like boring at all. You know, we haven't, we've, we've been switching it up, having fun. So it's been really fun so far. That's great. I mean, I just think of, I don't know how different it is, but back in the day when Eduardo Escobar and David Peralta are, are out there, they keep it light. Is Peralta still chasing Escobar with the cat? <laughs> he hasn't yet. <laughs> not that I know of. Probably saving I, that for the regular season. Yeah, I do need more of that stuff going on. Uh, those two crack me up. Escobar is hilarious. Peralta loves to mess around too. They're both they're both hilarious dudes. For you, you know, you mentioned getting stuck in the elevator briefly in in college, but you did go to Hawaii. And when I uh, when I met you, of course, you're from the valley and you uh, grew up on the, on the west side of town. But you know, going to college over there, and you said you would go back. I and mean, what a fantastic place, right? It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I was curious. Have you did you learn to surf at any point when you were out there? I didn't. I was too scared. Uh, I, I, I did a lot of like boogie boarding, body, body surfing. Um, but to get, the, to get a surfboard out there in those, in that water, I don't know if I would have made it. Uh, it. The waves are just a different level out there. They're so strong. The current so strong. So like you look at it, like you can see, I mean, cause I've been to the California beach plenty of times and, and you get the same size waves in Hawaii, but it's just a whole different strength. Like you, I first time I went out there with a, a boogie board. It was like I couldn't even get over the first couple of waves. It was so strong. But starting to get used to it. Um, I think the first time I did it, I was like out there for like a couple hours. I started getting cramps in my feet, my legs. So it's a real deal out there. It's not. It's not yeah. something to mess around with. I'm sure you could find like a smaller beach, but I was going with my friends who were local, so we were going to uh, some pretty serious spots. But didn't ever get the nerve to take out a surfboard yeah some of those waves are crazy like you see you see the videos of surfers out there and think oh my gosh that's really dangerous but yeah the surfers out there make it look easy but you get out there and you try to paddle out you i would be able to move what's your favorite part of the culture there in hawaii just the hospitality um the hospitality is the biggest thing i noticed as soon as i got there so what my best friend one of my best friends who I met there, he's from Hawaii, local guy. And I met his family and, and right away, like they were, they brought me right in. Like I was one of their own and I met his, all his aunts and uncles. Like it was, it was just right away. Like the hospitality, like it was like, almost like, okay, we're going to bring you in as our son. Cause you know, we know your parents aren't here. And so it was kind of like I had a home away from home and I, still to this day, I have a home away from home. Our families have met, our families are really close. Um, and the whole Island is like that as, as long as you come in with a, a, an open mind to a different culture and you're willing to embrace that new culture, they're willing to do the same. And, uh, that was a really cool place to be. Yeah. It does seem like just, uh, friendly people when you go visit there, over there. And, uh, that's really neat to have that. Now, like, like I said, you grew up here in the Valley millennium high, I believe. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to assume you're a Cardinals fan and you root for the local teams, right? Big Cardinals fan. I don't follow the Suns as much because I'm not a big basketball fan, but huge Cardinals fan. So, you know, we're going to go with some nuggets of wisdom with the Cardinals free agency moves. It's been a big headline all week. You know, different guys getting signed. AJ Green coming in. We saw JJ Watt last week. How excited are you for these moves? I, I'm really excited. The JJ Watt move was sick especially because we're getting Chandler Jones back from injury. Um, the AJ Green, I know the last couple of years, he hasn't really put up the numbers, but I do like that matchup because you're going to have to either shade coverage to Hopkins and give AJ Green a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, hopefully Fitzgerald comes back and we get him underneath. That would be sick. Um, but I just love the matchup. It's going to be a lot of tough matchups for a defense facing 
You got Kyler in the backfield, who's sick when you leave him with uh, with no spy, or if you're not, or if you're in man coverage. Um, so I like, I really like the pickups. New center, yeah, yeah, now. Rodney Hudson, yeah, yeah Rodney Hudson. Uh, that's a big pickup. I, I, mean, I love the analysis. I think you could do yeah. a good job, uh, maybe doing some games, maybe have you as an in as a guest analyst. <laughs> that would be that would be sweet. I would love <laughs> to do that. Yeah, but you know, I got I got my own sport to uh takes a lot. Yeah, you're kind of busy. But AJ yeah. Green, you're right. He's I feel like uh even though he's a little bit older, he's a guy that hasn't been at his best in Cincinnati with all the shuffling of you know quarterbacks having a new quarterback last year, different coaching. So We'll see. We'll see how that turns out. But I think, uh, I think he's still a guy that can win his one-on-one matchups. He's he's not as fast as he was, but he's still big, can catch, runs nasty routes. Um, the more weapons you have, the harder it is for the defense. So, so you know, you being you being local, you have you talked to Larry Fitzgerald at all? You got any insight on that? No. Is he coming back? <laughs> Give him my number. I would love to talk to him. <laughs> No, I haven't. I haven't actually talked to any of those Cardinals guys, but that would be sick. I would do some jersey swaps or something. That'd be dope. Yeah, I mean, and I think everyone's just wondering, like, what is Larry? Because growing up, I mean, I can imagine. Okay, so not to sorry, Larry, we're just going to blatantly call you old here, but you were probably rather small when you started watching Larry Fitzgerald, right? Do you have any memories yeah. of some of those games? Oh man, Larry, Larry Legend, nice hands, Larry. I still, I still quote that uh, that commercial he was in with the. When he makes all the catches and they're like, nice hands, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I call him. Every time I play with him at Matt or anything, or he makes a catch, I call him nice hands, Larry. But yeah, he's Larry legend. He's, uh, he's, I mean, it's, it's like he doesn't age. I mean, you see Tom Brady doing it with age, but he's at the quarterback position where you're not getting really getting beat up, but you got Larry who's lining up in the slot now at older age, blocking linebackers and, and running over the middle. So He's just a guy that's so crafty. Uh, you never know what he's going to do. He he gets open, and he's going to catch the ball when it's near him. And those guys are so valuable. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he usually – he's usually signed by now. Telling us by now. I know. Usually yeah. at the Phoenix Open, of course, this was a strange year, and he's out golfing. I guess he was snowboarding, you oh, know, which, by the way, that's – what's that? It's not a good sign. That sounds like retirement Larry. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean – He's so careful to take care of his body. Yeah. And yet, you know, I mean, but this is not me. Me snowboarding is me falling about every four right. minutes. So right, right, right. how about that? Have you tried? Uh, I, I don't know why I'm really picking on you here with the board sports here. Surfboard, snowboard. What's that? I have snowboarded. It didn't go well. I actually got a concussion the last time I snowboarded. Oh, my gosh. Was, back <laughs> was it here in Arizona? Did you go up to snowball yeah, or? Yeah, yeah. snowball. Yeah which is beautiful and great. That's where I, I actually learned in the Northeast where it's like a bunny hill. Okay. But it's hard. Like snowboarding is difficult. It's very hard. The, the whole concept of having both your feet connected to the board was, you know, being able to turn. It's, it was a weird, weird concept. I started getting the hang of it, but I didn't do too. It didn't end well. Apparently not. So you fell <laughs> on your head. Yeah, I was, uh, we were racing down. Me and my buddies were racing down. And I was like looking back to see where they were, didn't see a little uh, little hill in front of me, clipped it, went over the front. Speaking of taking care of your body, it's been a big topic, um, not only because of the production, so you're seeing the results. And baseball's funny that way. Sometimes you don't always see them, but you're seeing, um, you know, you leading the Cactus League and in, in hitting at the top and average. And you did a lot of different things in the off season, though. It's been a storyline for the Diamondbacks has been your change of your whole habits, right? Everything that you do to prepare. So tell me about that. Yeah, I just, it was in the middle of last year, actually, maybe to, even towards the beginning where just felt like I wasn't ready for the season for the first time. Uh, that layoff kind of killed me. And I felt what it felt like to not be ready for a season physically and so I made it priority this off season to take all those things that I've heard and seen and take them more seriously. And that was, you know, my sleep, uh, my eating and, and I was always training hard in the off season, but it was training hard while doing those other two things and then carrying it into the season. So those were the three main things that I wanted to take seriously this off season and then take into the season. 
the eating part is my biggest struggle. You know, I, I like to mix in cheat meals. And once you mix in one, it's hard to mix in, <laughs> not mix in another. So those are my biggest, uh, that's, that's still my biggest struggle. It's going to be an everyday grind for me until maybe it becomes a habit. Um, because I still like to joke with guys in the locker room. Like, you know, of course you've, you've heard from Nikki about him. He was getting on me about my eating habits, but I like to, you know, joke about joke with him about like, come on, man, just try some Doritos, you know? Just, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's my biggest struggle. Got to stay on top of that. Yeah. And, and Nick is really big. I've heard him talk about sleep a lot. And that's, yeah. that's another hard one though, too. But Hey, if you're getting more sleep, your body's probably loving that. Right. Oh my gosh. I've gotten so good at it. Like last night it was, I think 930. I couldn't keep my eyes open, fell asleep. I was asleep. And, and normally for spring training, I'm a 12 o'clock, one o'clock. That's what time I was going to bed for spring training. And I thought like, Oh, that's, that's normal. I could, I just drink extra coffee in the morning. I'll be ready to go. But uh, yeah, once you get your body in that habit of getting, enough sleep it's like it's ready to turn off you know at, at the at the same time every night it's ready to shut down so it's been really good i've never had that before i've never been able to fall asleep when i needed to and that was that was the biggest reason i want to change because last year you know you have those travel day day games after a night game and you come home in the night game and all you're telling yourself is like i need to go to sleep i need to go to sleep i need to go to sleep and next thing you know it's 2 30 in the morning you're stuck laying in bed and you wake up four hours of sleep and try to play the next day. So I wanted to be able to control when I went to sleep and, and I've gotten really good at it. Great. That's awesome. We're excited to see you bring it into the regular season, Josh. Uh, thank you for the time and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Josh Rojas joining us here on the baseball brunch brought to you by Wendy's breakfast breakfast. So good. You'll want to tell someone about it. We'll see you next time.